Okay, now, what I have here is our free NAS box. It has one 40 gigabyte hard drive installed. You can kind of see it right here. It has our blank floppy disk get inserted. And in the CD-ROM drive is our free NAS disk that we burned earlier. So, and I've configured the BIOS as I just showed you to boot from the CD and nothing else. So now I'm going to power the machine on. You'll have to excuse my method for doing this since I have the case cover off. The button is kind of recessed. So I have to... There we go. Now, in theory, this machine should boot to FreeNAS. In fact, I w should, you really don't even have to have a monitor connected at this point. The only reason I have my monitor connected is just to show you guys the booting process. And here it goes. It's a lot of long, very boring... Uh, status information on your hardware as FreeBSD, which is the operating system this is based, FreeNAS is based on. Wonderful operating system. Uh, very Unix-like, Linux-like. Uh, FreeBSD, as the kernel tries to figure out what kind of hardware is in your machine, and therefore what drivers it needs to load, and what it needs to load into memory to get your machine fully up and running. You see a short little prompt here, and you can see it's only a three second wait because the machine is designed to operate headless, and so it doesn't want to wait very long. And now it's figuring out what all hardware, you'll see messages about what hardware is attached to the machine, what networking card is attached to the machine, uh, whether it can obtain a network address or not, uh, you know, the CD ROM drive. You hear the floppy drive, every single piece of information about the machine is going to go through and figure out as it boots up. And now it's finishing. It's writing its configuration file. And now, as you heard that little chirp, that little chirp to us free NAS guys, that means our storage box is up and running. That means free NAS is up and running, and that means we can administer it. Now, as you see, there's a console menu here. Ideally, you shouldn't have to touch anything on this console menu. Ideally, in fact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to turn the machine sideways first of all. I'm going to unplug my keyboard. You can see it lit up down here. And now I'm going to unplug it even showed me my keyboard detached. <laughs> and now I'm going to unplug the video. So there's no more video. The only thing that are attached to this machine is power and networking. It's attached to my local network. So, then how do you use this? How do you configure your machine? Well, this is the brilliant part. I love this. So I'm going to switch back to my main computer now. This is the one, my main computer that I use for gaming and this is my desktop computer. Um, it's hiding behind this monitor right here actually, I showed you earlier. Screen saver. Now, um, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go open up my web browser. And what FreeNAS does is attach itself to a certain IP address on your network. Most people's networks are 192.168.1. something. Well, what FreeNAS does is attaches itself to .250 at the end. So, since mine is 192.168.1. whatever, FreeNAS has attached itself to 192.168.1. And that's what it's always going to do, unless you configure it differently at the console menu. So, here I go. And what does it take me to? It takes me to a screen asking for a username and password. 
The default username and password for ad, for FreeNAS is username admin, and the password is FreeNAS. F R E E N A S. You can change that later if you like. So I'm going to log in, and immediately it brings me to the FreeNAS status status screen. And what this shows me is all kinds of inf information about my machine. I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller so you guys can see. There we go. All kinds of information about the machine and how it's running. Uh, host name is FreeNAS Local. You can change that later if you want, but you don't need to. Version of FreeNAS it's running. Uh, what date FreeNAS was built on that it's running. OS version is FreeBSD. Da 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 da. All this time. System time. Uh, the uptime. Interesting. I've had FreeNAS machines up for almost a year. So, <laughs> it shows you how often you have to reboot. Uh, you don't generally reboot for stability change or stability issues. You reboot because you're either adding a drive or your power goes out. Last config change. CPU temperature it tells you in case things are running too hot. Uh, CPU frequency. As you can see this hovers between 800 and, and 1.8 gigahertz. Well, the reason it does that is because it uh, FreeBSD is fully aware of Intel's power saving technology. So the CPU will idle itself down to the least possible amount that it can, it, it can still run and stay running to save electricity, to save heat output, and, and uh, you know, basically that's it. Uh, if it's not needed, it's going to idle itself down. It just does not in impair performance in any way. It shows CPU usage. You might see this right now, of course, it's at zero, but once you get your drive set up, you're going to see it spike a little bit. You know, usually 20 to 30 percent is, is something you'll see. Shows memory usage 6 percent of 512 megs or 531 megs, whatever that says. Uh, FreeNAS only needs 128 megs of RAM to run, 256 would be ideal but it only needs 128. Uh, depends on how many extra services you you uh, have. Disk space usage, ordinarily this would show you uh, the number of drives you have and how much free space is on each of them. What nice little graphical style just like these uh, are up here, but we haven't configured a disk yet. So I'll go here real, real quick. I'm going to configure a disk. And you'll have to excuse me, I could be using Fraps or a screen recording software to do this, but it's just too much of a pain in the ass to switch back and forth between the camera and the and the uh, software, so you'll have to deal. So I'm going to go to Disk and Management, and you can, it'll show you right now, there's all my disks. Actually, these are old disks because this is an old uh, FreeNAS configuration, so I'm going to get rid of all these. You have to pardon me while I do that. I forgot that floppy disk that I used has an old has our old FreeNAS configuration on it. So I'm going to apply changes. I'll wait for it to. You can see it's. it's waiting for a response from the web server. Again, this does have a built-in web server. That's how you're doing all this, is through, through a web server, but the web server is internal to your network. Nobody externally can access it unless you set it up. You have to go in and manually configure it to allow you to access it from an outside uh, source. So, 